Several years ago, I participated in the Rails Rumble contest and submitted this app called Daily Stamp. The way this works is you enter in something you want to accomplish daily, let's say contribute to open source and then get started. And then this presents you with a calendar and a stamper which you can use to stamp any day which you accomplish this task. Now what I want to focus on in this episode is the ability to customize stamp. So here you can change the image icon or add your own stamp icon. And what better image to use than a picture of GitHub's OctaCat? You can see here it's in full color. And so let me choose this and upload that. So this turns it into a stamp looking icon. And there are several different colors that are provided as well. So we can choose a given color and submit it. So now this becomes the stamp displayed on the calendar. And what I want to show you here in this episode is how you can perform the same image manipulation to convert one image into something that looks like this. A key ingredient here is image magic. I have a love-hate relationship with this. Uh, it's a pain to set up and use, but once you figure it out, it's quite powerful. And if you're wanting to do extensive image manipulation, this can take you pretty far. Now a good place to start are the command line tools. This will give you an idea of what image magic is capable of and what steps are involved in processing your image through it. Installation can be a little tricky. If you're on Mac OS X, I highly recommend installing through Homebrew with brew install image magic. So this should give you access to the convert command along with several others for processing the images. And the version I'm using here of image magic is 675. Now in addition to the source image, which is what I'll be converting, I have this other image, which is sort of an overlay texture. It's a little bit difficult to see here, but it's basically just a white image with some transparency to give it a stamp looking texture. Now my first objective is to resize and crop the source image so that it composites nicely with this overlay texture. Now if you check out the documentation for the convert command, you can see a list of options which can be passed in, including options to crop or resize the image. And both of those options accept this geometry uh, parameter, which we can get further documentation on here. So this tells us different ways that we can format the argument to change its behavior. And this is really handy if you're trying to make a square thumbnail like we are when you have an oddly shaped aspect ratio image. The one I'll be using here is this caret symbol, which will allow me to fill the stamp image while maintaining the image's aspect ratio. So let's do this. I'm going to run the convert command on the OctoCAD image and resize this to 70 by 70 pixels. I'll use the caret symbol there. And also I want to crop it to that same dimensions. But uh, for cropping, I also want to supply the offset value, which will just be zero. And I'll just save this as a source.ping image. And by the way, Image Magic is really good about uh, choosing the format. So if we just do a JPEG image here, then it will automatically handle the conversion. But I'll keep this as a ping. So here's the resulting image. Uh, the dimensions are right, but notice that it's off center. I want it to crop in the middle instead. This can be accomplished through a gravity option, which I can set before the crop option, just set gravity, and then set this to center, which will instruct it to uh, keep it centered as it's cropping it. There we go, that looks much better. So already we have a nice command we can use to turn any image into a thumbnail. But I wanna go further. And let's turn this into a grayscale image and add some contrast so that it can easily be converted into a stamp. We can accomplish all of this by passing in a few more options. Quantize will be used to set the color palette and we can set it to a grayscale. By the way, I found the casing to be important there. And then we can add a colors option to do the actual conversion. I'll set it to 256 colors and then I'll add a contrast option to make it pop a little more. There we go, we now have a grayscale image. Now it's time to composite the overlay on top of it so it'll give it a stamp texture. We can do this easily enough by using the composite command to overlay one image on top of the other. So I want to composite the stamp overlay image onto the source image, and the output should just be the source image, so I'm just going to overwrite that image. There we go, now we have that stamp texture overlaid on top. The next thing I want to do is add some color. Now not only can the convert command be used to process existing images, but you can also use it to create images from scratch. So let's make a new image with a size of 70 by 70 pixels, and I want to color it red, so I can do that by passing in the canvas option and setting that to red. Now you can also pass in an RGB or hexadecimal value here instead of a named color, and also I found it necessary in some versions of Image Magic to use a CX option instead of a canvas option. So keep that in mind if you do uh, run into errors here. All right, so let's save this to an image called uh, color.ping. So this generated a colored image which we can composite with the source image. 
but instead of managing yet another file, I'm going to delete this colored image because we can handle the compositing in the same convert command. So here's how this works. I'm going to load in the source image and then I can configure how it should be composed with the other one. I'm going to use the copy opacity composition setting and you'll see the effect in a minute and then I'll tell it to composite this. And then I'll generate a new file, let's call it stamp.ping. And there's that generated image. It's so close, but it looks like we need to uh, invert the source image. We can do that by passing in parentheses when we load in the image, and those need to be escaped. And then I can pass in a negate option to tell it to invert the colors on that source image when it loads it in. There we go. Now our stamp image looks correct. And it would be very easy to configure our command to change the colors for the different stamps. Once you have this figured out, you can merge the entire thing into one convert command. It's a little bit long and hairy, but hey, it works. And you can see the output here looks the same. Now the question is, how do we get this functionality into our Rails app? Well, one option is just to execute this command from within Ruby, and that's not such a bad idea. There are a couple of gems available to do just this. Image Sorcery is a thin wrapper around the command line tools. Another one that does something similar is Minimagic. However, I found the interface to both of these gems to be a little bit cumbersome when dealing with extensive image manipulation. I'd probably just stick with uh, keeping the whole command in a string and executing it through that. And then of course, we have the classic rmagic gem. This hasn't been updated recently and some criticize it for leaking memory, but I've had great success with it, and I think it's a valid option if you're looking for an alternative to the command line interface. This wraps the C library, so the interface won't always be a one-to-one -one mapping with the command line, but it has a pretty decent user guide with some nice documentation to check out. So let's see what's involved in using rmagic to generate the same stamp image. First I'll gem install rmagic to get the latest version. Now I like to get the image manipulation working in a simple Ruby script before I actually move it over to my Rails app, so I'll make a new stamp rb script. First I'll require rmagic, and then I want to load in the source image, which I can do with magic image.read, and I'll use that octocat uh, ping, and then this returns an array of layer images, so I'm going to read, or actually fetch the first uh, image from that. Now there's a very handy method called resize to fill, which basically does the cropping and resizing behavior that I did in the command line. And then we can call quantize on this to convert it to a grayscale. And in here I can say 256 colors and to use the magic gray color space. And you can check out the documentation for details on these arguments you can pass into these methods. So I'll say I want to also add contrast to it and passing true here will add contrast instead of removing it. So this returns a new image record, which I'm just going to reset to that same uh, variable. Next, I want to composite the overlay image, so I'll first fetch that, and that's at uh, called stamp overlay.ping. So then I can call source.composite with a bang to make it in place, and that's the overlay image at zero, zero dimensions, and then I want to perform a uh, over composite operation on it. So that will end up overlaying the image onto the source. Next I want to make a new colored image. I can do with magic image.new and then pass in the dimensions. And then a block in here and that will allow me to change some uh, settings such as the background color. I can set that to red. And then I want to composite onto this colored image the source image, but first I'll call negate on it to reverse the colors and set the dimensions to zero. And the operation should be copy opacity, which is what we did in the uh, command line. And then I can just write this out to stamp.ping. That's it. So this will do basically the same thing we did through the command line. Let's try it out. So I'll run the stamp.rb script. So here's the generated stamp ping image and it looks correct. So for comparison, here are what the two different approaches look like. If you're using the command line approach, just be sure to watch out for a shell injection if you're accepting user parameters. Using our magic here feels more verbose, but it's also more dynamic. Just watch out for potential memory leaks. Now off camera, I built this simple Rails app to demonstrate adding this functionality in, and so we can just upload a file here, and then create a stamp, and then it generates a stamp image like we did before. Now let me briefly walk you through the code. I decided to use rmagic for this example, along with Carrier Wave to handle the upload. So I added these two gems to my gem file, and you can learn more about Carrier Wave in episode 253. 
And then next I have this stamp model which simply mounts a carrier wave uploader called a stamp uploader. And here's what that looks like. So this is pretty standard except for the processing code down here. This is all that's needed to handle the stamp version. So what I did is loop through a variety of different colors and for each one I made a different version and carrier wave of that image. And to generate that version I just processed uh, the stamp method here and passed in that given color. So this calls manipulate, which is a custom carrier wave uh, method and telling it I want to use rmagic and generate a ping formatted image. And so that will pass in the source image and expect me to return uh, the image I want it to generate. So this is basically the same code I used earlier with a couple variables thrown in. By the way, you'd probably want to move this off into some kind of background process, but that's a bit out of the scope of this episode. Now since each color is a different version, I can easily change the color that's rendered out in the view template by passing in a different version. And there we go. We now have some pretty extensive image manipulation done through our Rails app. Well that's it for this episode. I hope you found it useful. In this week's pro episode, I will show you how to use Monit to ensure your Rails application stays up and running smoothly. I will also show how to keep tabs on it so you can be alerted if something goes wrong. To watch that episode and gain access to all previous pro and revised episodes, visit railscast.com pro and you can sign up there for just $9 per month.